So once again on Covenant Sunday, I greet you here in the shrine. Uh, last Covenant Sunday, we were privileged to have the family branch share with us their insights and reflections on Father Kentonick's talk. And this month, we are having the Women's League, the Single Women's League, share with us the joy of, that they experienced when they celebrated last month during August, the 100th uh, anniversary of Women in Schoenstatt. So I'd like to introduce to you now Shirley, uh, who will begin the presentation. Enjoy. And greetings to you all on this Covenant Sunday. For those who don't know me, I'm Shirley Hall, a member of the single women's group here in New South Wales, and we have prepared this presentation because we want to share with you some of the joys and the highlights of our participation in the recent Jubilee celebrations held in Schoenstatt. This has been a momentous year for us all, but in the history of our Schoenstatt family, this is an especially momentous year as we celebrate 100 years since women became part of Schoenstatt. Although the actual date on which Countess Gertrude of Bullion and her cousin Marie Chrisman made their consecration in the original shrine, that was on the 8th of December 1920, but the International Single Women's League decided to celebrate this milestone in August this year. The plans were to have a Jubilee celebration in Schoenstatt with women from about 20 countries, from different cultures, from different languages and walks of life, but all united in celebrating this milestone. There was to be a Congress for delegates during the first week, and this was to be followed by a general celebration open to all on the Saturday and Sunday. From Australia, we had planned to have a group of five ladies attend the celebrations. While preparations began early in 2019, the major spiritual preparation was a nine month novena beginning in November last year. During the, no the novena, we were inspired by the words of Father Kentonick when he called out to each of us each day anew, be what you are, be it in the best possible way. However, along came COVID-19 and all plans had to be changed. After cons consulting with women in the various countries, it was decided that, ju that the Jubilee was too significant an event to be cancelled altogether. So a modified celebration was planned for just two days from the 7th to the 8th of August. Thanks to the hard work of the Jubilee team in Schoenstatt, each country was able to experience the celebrations through translations of the celebrations in their own language and all the events were transmitted thanks to modern technology via Zoom and live streaming. Our practical preparation had turned into a digital contribution and we would now like to share with you our greetings to those gathered in Schoenstatt, as well as a testimony given by Michelle who had experienced the 75 years celebrations of women in Schoenstatt 25 years ago. Jubilee is a time of remembrance, looking back and looking forward. It's amazing, a hundred years ago, the world was suffering under the Spanish flu, and now history is repeating as we suffer under the COVID-19 pandemic. We gather spiritually and physically with you to celebrate a hundred years of the women in Schoenstatt, the Women's League. A hundred years ago, um, the world relied on strong women, the nurses in the battlefields and those keeping the home fires burning. They were selfless women bringing um, love to those on the battlefield. The young men must have really um, radiated Our Lady because Gertrude and the women took on the uh, message of Mary and wanted to join Schoenstatt. We give thanks today for Gertrude and those first women for speaking to Father Kentonick and asking him 
to make him realise that Schoenstatt needed women for Schoenstatt to grow. A hundred years on and the world is still at war, but a different war. We're um, fighting against greed, poverty and abuses. The message of Christ and his mother has been lost, drowned out and sometimes never heard. So now it is our time to radiate Mary, to be Marian hotspots in our workplaces. We are called to bear Christ, bring Christ and serve Christ for our modern day. We in Australia are blessed to be united spiritually with those gathering in the original Schoenstatt for the milestone of 100 years of Schoenstatt Women's League. I was blessed 25 years ago to join um, in the original Schoenstatt for our 75th Jubilee of the Women's League. While we can't be there in person this time, we are spiritually united there with all those in Germany. My Jubilee experience 25 years ago is still imprinted on my heart. So my wish for you, you women gathered there this time, that in 25 years you can look back and your hearts are still wellsprings of love. Let us be Mary for our time and the places we are called to be. Enjoy your days together. Pray for us here in Australia and we are spiritually united with you. May our jubilee experience and graces continue to carry us into the future as we crown our mother, queen of women in the world. Greetings from Australia. The spiritual preparation for the jubilee was connected with striving to embody our branch ideal, to be a living tabernacle, and thereby become more and more like Mary, our great model and educator. Through our novena, we prepared to crown Our Lady in our home shrines under the title, Queen of Women All Over the World. We saw as our task to strive for genuine womanhood, which is God's gift to us as women. We sought testimonies from women in our workplaces about how they saw their womanhood and what this meant to them. Listening to these views of other women gave us the incentive to reach out for the ideal which Father Kentonick has given us. You may find it interesting to hear what a couple of these women had to say. I love the fact that we can multitask, um, look after our children um, and be that kind, nurturing uh, wife, mother um, to the family and keep the family together. And I think as a woman in Australia, I also have the power to have a voice to make a difference and speak out for other women in Australia or in other parts of the world that don't have the same good conditions that I do. When it comes to the role of women moving forward into the future, there is a verse from Proverbs that comes to my mind where it says that she is clothed in strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days to come. Afghanistan's went through the war for uh, many, many years. So um, it means being a woman, uh, um, um, it means a lot to me because here I've got freedom. I'm so proud and I'm so happy that uh, uh, I'm a woman and uh, thank you. As well as these digital contributions, each of us had sent our signature to Schoenstatt, signifying our willingness to continue the mission we have been given by our father and founder as single women in Schoenstatt. Our signatures, as symbols of our readiness to continue our father's mission, were our Jubilee gift. As part of the Jubilee celebrations, which began in the Adoration Church on the Friday evening, the 7th of August, our signatures were placed into a protective plate, which would be placed then into the tabernacle in the original shrine the following day. We were very lucky that our newest Schoenstatt sister from Australia, Sister Rita Basari, was able to represent Australia, place our signatures into the protective plate and on our behalf, sign a certificate indicating that we were participating in the crowning of Our Lady in our home shrines. 
We will now show you briefly this event which took place in the Founder Chapel. On the Saturday morning, which was in the evening for us here in Australia, the celebrations continued with a vigil mass in the Adoration Church. While it was sad to see so few ladies in the church, which was restricted because of COVID-19, it was still a very solemn and meaningful ceremony. Again, Sister Rita represented Australia by carrying the Australian flag in the entrance procession. During the prayers of the faithful, various symbols were placed in front of the altar as women from different countries prayed the prayers in their own language. There was an MTA picture, a lily, a globe, a spiritual daily order booklet representing our striving and a rosary with a cross. The prayer connected with the symbol of the rosary was prayed in English by Sister Rita. We invite you now to share the joy we felt to be so well represented by a fellow Australian. Eternal Father, the strength of a person often shows itself in difficult situations. Here, people rise above themselves and let us marvel at their greatness. Mary showed her strength precisely in the most difficult moments when she walked with her son the way of the cross, when she stood under the cross. We pray for all people who have to carry a heavy cross. There are also situations in our lives which simply are where we have to accept the cross, carry it and persevere under it. What a grace it is to know that Mary is with us. We are never alone. Like Mary, we can say our simple yes to our cross because we know that we are not alone because we know that, we, that it comes from your loving hand. Furthermore, through the capital of grace, our cross can become a blessing for others. Thus the cross is both grace and a gift at the same time because Mary walks with us. Help us never to lose trust in you and to follow your wise, guide, wise guide, guidance faithfully. In this way, we can remain strong and worthy, simple and mild. This is what we ask of you. Liebe um Liebe. Treue und Treue, Krone und Krone. The climax of the celebrations was the crowning in the original shrine on the Saturday evening, which was early Sunday morning our time. The celebrations began with a bouquet of roses and lilies being presented as a gift from all nations. They also symbolised the various generations of the League, as well as all League members who have given their lives for the mission. The signatures that had been received from around the world and placed on Father's tomb the previous day were now in the protective cover for the tabernacle, which was our crowning gift. Those who were present prayed the following prayer. We come here today, first of all, to give thanks 
for the wonderful events and the experiences we have had as Women's League over the last 100 years. We want to give thanks for the streams of love that have flowed from here to our countries, to our shrines, but also to our home shrines. We want to consciously strengthen one another and pray with one another, from heart to heart, from heart shrine to heart shrine, from country to country. During the crowning, each lady was asked to hold up her crowning symbol and they prayed together. We ask you to help us in these turbulent times to rediscover our womanhood and to live it in a truly Christian and authentic way. Look down upon us with a loving gaze. Grant us the grace to begin anew in the covenant of love because we know Holiness means to have the courage to start anew each day. Take us by the hand and form us more and more into your image, Queen of our hearts, Mary. We want to see like you, to hear like you, to speak like you, to understand like you, to forgive like you, but above all, to love like you. Show us ways to be merry in today's world. A at our place of work, within our family, our circle of friends, in our parish, with our neighbours, in good and bad days. Show us, Mother and Queen, where our commitment to you is needed today. We are ready and we dare to start anew with you today here and now. We are united in the shrine where the flames of our heart beat for our mother thrice admirable, who through us wants to build your kingdom. The celebrations ended with those ladies who were present making a ring of loyalty around the original shrine. Love for love, loyalty for loyalty, and crown for crown. The Jubilee celebrations were a wonderful experience for us here in Australia, even though we did not participate 
in quite the way we had envisaged. We were not in Schoenstead. We were not part of a large, enthusiastic group of Schoenstead women from around the world, all gathered together in these holy places and united in celebrating this wonderful jubilee. But we did participate in the celebrations, even though it was in a quite different way to what we had envisaged. We participated via Zoom and live streaming, and we connected with each other via phone messaging. In spite of all these changes of plans, taking part in these celebrations was not only a wonderful experience for, for us all, but it also gave us an opportunity to give thanks to our Blessed Mother and to our Father and Founder for the spiritual fruitfulness of the Women's League here in Australia since 1966 and for the heritage that we have received from the many women who have gone before us, not only those in the Women's League, but also the women's in the sisters' community, in the mother's branch, in the family branch, and in the pilgrim mother apostolate. With these we pray, Mary, let us be like you, your living tabernacles, bringing Christ into the world. We were delighted to have been able to share some of this joyous occasion with you. I would like to, in, to conclude with a prayer from Heavenwards, which was a focus of and the inspiration for our striving as we prepared for this Jubilee crowning. I would like to pray it again on behalf of us all, asking our Mother Thrice Admirable to be with us as our Mother and Queen as we go into the future. Let us walk like you through life. Let us mirror you forever. Strong and noble, meek and mild, peace and love be our endeavour. Walk in us through our world. Make it ready for the Lord. Thank you. Shirley, thank you so much. But not only to Shirley, I'd like to thank all of the Women's League uh, Sheila, who's put the video together, Michelle, Edna, Agnes and Anne, the whole group who were preparing so well to celebrate this beautiful jubilee that uh, Shirley has just shared with us. And I think uh, it's probably up to us now to reflect on the importance of the women and what they've done over the years in Schoenstatt. As Shirley mentioned, it's not only the single women's league, but all women, whether it's the mother's branch, the family's branch, the pilgrim mother, the sisters. It's just important for us to see God's workings and dealings in bringing women into Schoenstatt to complement and to give the fullness of our covenant of love. Since So thank you to all of you who've prepared this video for us. And now, as it's Covenant Sunday, let us turn to the Blessed Mother and to renew our covenant. My Queen, my Mother, I give myself entirely to you and to show my devotion to you, I consecrate to you this day my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, myself without reserve, as I am your own, my good Mother, Guard and defend me as your property and your possession. Amen. Mother Thrice Admirable, Queen and Victress of Schoenstatt, pray for us. And we ask Father Kentenich now to bless us. Mother with your divine Son, bless us each and every one. Amen. So thank you and have a wonderful um, Covenant Sunday. God bless. <laughs>